Hey everybody, how you doing? Today, we're going to talk about economics. We're actually going to have a bit of fun on economics. We're going to give a brief definition of economics. We're going to talk about some of the major aspects associated with economics. But we thought we would start with a few quotes because economics, in reality, is quite an interesting profession. We use that word a lot, interesting, right? Interesting in that it is a science, but it is somewhat more of an art than a science, in my opinion. Economics is a science because we rely upon facts, statistics, graphs, charts, tables. Look online and, and pull up economics, and you'll see many different graphs. Uh, supply and demand is a very famous graph in economics. We also see tables, and we try to reach conclusions based on numbers. Numbers is really the heart of what economics is. So given that economics uses numbers and statistics and facts, that's why it's seen as somewhat of a science. It's also an art, or even seen more as an art, because it's hard to predict the future based on economical conditions, which means that we spend quite a bit of time trying to determine what the future is going to be like, and then we try to achieve it. I mentioned I was going to mention quite a few quotes here, and so there's a couple that I want to start with, and that is um, this thing about the future is in economics, the majority is always wrong. That's from John Kenneth Galbraith, very famous economist. Again, he said, in economics, the majority is always wrong. It reminds me of former British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. She's one of the seminal um, politicians, individuals of the 20th century. In fact, Time Magazine named her one of the top 20 uh, movers and shakers of the 20th century. She is the first woman ever to be elected to a head of government in the 20th century quite a remarkable person. I saw her give a speech one time, just absolutely flawless, um, without notes, and she talked for 45 minutes. Very impressive. Anyway, Margaret Thatcher wanted to change the economy of Great Britain. At the time, if you were to look at the economy, it was really moving towards a third world country. One of their ambassadors said, we find ourselves on a decline. It's not a direct quote, but we find ourselves on a decline moving to where we have to beg and borrow in order to meet our bills. That was in around late 1970s. Along comes Margaret Thatcher, and she had an idea about how to revolutionize, not just stabilize, but revolutionize England. There was about 256, if the number serves me right, economists said that her plan was wrong, that that should not be the plan that people should follow. She ended up being right. The economists were wrong. That's where this thought of, in economics, the majority is always wrong. I'll give you another interesting quote. This one from Lawrence. Last name is Peter. He said, An economist is an expert who will know tomorrow why the things he predicted yesterday didn't happen today. So when we talk about a science, we often think of a scientific event that you can predict the future of science and is most often associated with medicine and so you do research in medicine and you hope you can conclude that if you take this drug that you will have this response that's a science there's other sciences as well when we look at the stars um, of above when we look at our universe we try to make understandings that would give us predictions of the future. By and large, they come through. When you look at some of the satellites that are orbited, they know that if they put a satellite up in a certain way that it's going to stay for a certain amount of time. A science. So economics, which likes to think of itself as a science, is not necessarily a science. In fact, it's somewhat biased. Depending on what part of the political spectrum you are, you can see how one economist on one side will say something and an economist on the other side would say the other. That's not necessarily a science, it's more of an art. 
And in fact, so much about economics is about interpretation. What do we mean by interpretation? So we have a GNP, which we'll learn about more, which is the gross national product or gross domestic product. And that's a figure. That's a number. It goes up and down every year. It's rarely the same. It usually goes up or it goes down, usually in a 3% category. An economist on one side will say that the growth in the GNP is good. An economist on the other will say it's not so good. It could be better. In fact, it's going down. Even though it's going up, it's actually going down because it's not going up as much as it should be expected. In science, you shouldn't have really two interpretations of the same event. You should have one interpretation, and that should be based solely on the number. So, what we hope to understand in this presentation is a bit about what economics is, but then also to understand more about the industry, to understand why it's so complex and convoluted, why there's so much controversy in economics. And there is. A couple of things should ground what we're going to be talking about in economics. First off is that numbers rule. Numbers rule, not interpretations. Once you stick, once you get into the interpretations of economics, we have to, st have to somewhat state that we've moved beyond the science and more into the art. Interpretations are art. The numbers are science. Because it's hard in some ways to debate the number itself. You can debate the interpretation of the number, but not the number itself. For example, if the inflation rate is 7%, the inflation rate is 7%. Unless a government or the government is being dishonest or untruthful to the public when they state after surveying the market that the market is indicating a 7% inflation rate, we have to take that that is a fact. Of course, if it's not a fact, then we will be not necessarily believing those figures in the future. But for the most part, we believe the inflation rates, the interest rates, the GNP, the debt, all of those figures that come out from the government have some believability to it. What doesn't have believability, though, is how we explain it, interpret it. Governments, no matter what kind, governments tend to have what's called a spin doctor. That's somebody or a group of people who, after a economic report, is delivered after some statistics are produced, they go out there and say why it's good or why it's bad, depending on how it benefits them. Rarely will you have two ec economists on both sides say the exact same thing. Yes, the economy went down 3%, but we all agree that it could have went down much more, and that's a good figure. The other side will say it went down 3%. If I was there, it'd only go down 2, 1, or actually be positive. Remember, they can say that because they're not there. When you're there, you have to make the decisions that change it. So, it's an interesting profession. One that, as we start learning about economics, we'll see, doesn't have as much respect, even believability, as it should. We hope, in this presentation and others, that we, when we talk about economics, we have more believability in the system probably the most important part of an economic theory or of an ec economic uh, a person who's an economist is to have believability. That when they make a statement, whether it's positive to what they philosophically believe or negative, that people believe it. George Bernard Shaw, who's another great theorist, said, if all the economists were laid end to end, they would not reach a conclusion. It's one of my favorite sayings. Another one by Edgar Fielder, very similar, says, Ask five economists and you'll get five different answers. Six if you went to Harvard. I'm not sure about the Harvard quote. I don't know if he went to Harvard, or maybe he didn't make it into Harvard. But if we look at these statistics with a sense of humor, what he's saying is that they rarely agree. And it's the same with the one that we had previous to this. If you laid them end to end, you still wouldn't get a conclusion. Which means they make a lot of statements and a lot of facts, but is there any conclusions at the end? Hmm, probably not. So, quite a bit of interesting statistics. 
another one, um, as far as a statement from John Kenneth Galbraith, again, a very famous person, is econom economics is an extremely useful tool as a form of employment for economists. So, in our presentations, we're not going to necessarily try to uh, ensure that the economics profession is one that you want to join, uh, to join. but we, what we want to do in this presentation is to give you an understanding of what economics is, but then also to understand how we, you, as an individual, can interpret, read, and understand economics. We should have a healthy skepticism when they move from explanation instead of giving the facts. The more they start to interpret, hopefully what we've laid the basis here for the first couple of minutes is that economics is not a profession with precision, precise. It's not one that if you read one economic report, you're going to be able to come across and come away understanding the exact nature of what you just read. For the most part, economists are presenting an opinion of events rather than the events themselves. That's why the profession has lost, in some ways, the believability that is necessary. Kurt Bills once said, and I'll, this will be the last quote of our presentation, but I think it's quite constructive, and understanding other people's perspective is important too. This is what he said. The reality is that we are all economists. We all deal with scarcity as we make choices and calculate how to ration various items and resources that we consume, produce, and utilize. Let me say it again because it's quite important. The reality is that we are, we are all economists. We all deal with scarcity, we'll talk about that in a second, as we make choices and calculate how to ration various items and resources that we consume, produce, and utilize. We're all economists. We all make different decisions, right, on how we consume, produce, and utilize. Because we make different decisions on our resources, then different decisions mean different opinions, perceptions, attitudes. Therefore, economics and economists are not going to agree on everything. A couple of sureties that we hope to understand in this presentation. First, I mentioned it is believability. We need to have a sense of authority and respect in what we say. We do that when we rely more upon the number than the explanation. Believability comes when everybody can agree with what you're saying. Most agree with the numbers. Say, if you're reasonable, all would agree with the numbers. Again, if the government is producing the GMP, the gross national product or gross domestic product, and they're stating that it went up 3%, we should believe that it's true. Until the government shows that their statistics are not right, then we would have to believe what the government is stating. Once they betray the truth, we'll never believe them again, at least those in government. For the most part, though, the numbers that are given by government, we believe. I'm using the term government universally. There are some countries, of course, whose governments do not produce actual or real numbers, but numbers that uphold their political stance or position. For the most part, in the United States and others, we believe the numbers. Again, where it moves from the numbers and we try to explain what the numbers mean to people like you and I, then we start to lose the believability in what economics is. Secondly, in economics, we believe in the future. It's consumed with the future. We look at the past to help us predict the future. We have to have a solid understanding of the past in order to predict the future. But it is a prediction. It's a prediction on events that have not occurred. It's a prediction on what we project those events to be. As a result, there is a sense of unknown in the future. That means that though we are predicting the future, there are many events that could occur before then. For instance, it's difficult, in some ways impossible, to predict human behavior. 
Because as soon as you make an action, there is a result, a consequence to that action. Some of those actions we can't predict. As a result, predictions are very difficult. For instance, if you're in the business world and you come up with a new communication strategy or even a marketing campaign, and you believe that your customers are going to like that marketing campaign, and then you produce it and customers don't like that marketing campaign, what happens is, is that it's hard to predict the outcome. You could do focus groups, test studies, pilots, but that isn't something that can, for the most part, give you an answer that is going to be a high level of confidence that you're going to be able to predict the outcome. One event, once taken, is going to affect future events. It's hard for us to predict how those future events are going to respond. That's why economics is not a precise science, even a science in some ways, and it's more of an art. Because it's talking more about the future than it is the present or the past. Third is bias. Bias is a person's opinion, perception about an event. Probably the single most important aspect about economics today is this issue of bias. In my opinion, it's really compromised the profession as a whole. Once an economist gives a point of view, you'll see quite a few of the public look and see where that economist came from, where they go to school, under what political administration did they work for. You see now that if the economist was from a democratic administration, they may say, well, somebody from a democratic. If it's from a Republican, same thing. Throughout the world, if you're more liberal or conservative, people will say, well, that's how you're interpreting. It's not true. It's just that that's your bias that you have, whether it's conservative bias or liberal bias. My hope as we study economics is quite the opposite, actually. My hope is that as we study economics, we look at it from several key aspects. One is that we support the believability of what we say. And we do that by sticking towards the facts, statistics, charts, tables. We have believability, albeit respect, by ensuring that the numbers make the decisions, not our interpretations of it. Believability is an important aspect. And bias. We need to eliminate all bias in the profession. The more that we can eliminate a bias in the perception, the better chance we have of having a public having an understanding, first off, but also having some respect in what we say. And third is the future. It is difficult to predict the future. If an economist could predict the future, they would know where to invest their monies. They would always be right. Anybody who would be in economics would be a millionaire or a billionaire because they're able to predict where the financial markets are able to go in the future. We're not able to do that. We're not able to do that with any great de degree of surety, confidence. As a result, when you try to predict the future, few are actually going to achieve it. You can get close, but then you have to ask, how many times are you going to get close? Is there an economist out there that's able to predict? You only have to look at political elections, right? There's people who are um, statisticians that are able to see trends, and they predict who's going to be elected in one or a different election. How many times have they been wrong? These people who spend their life studying patterns and trends and political events can't predict the future. Even those that do surveys and polls often find they're wrong once the election day comes. Many reasons for that. Sometimes people just aren't truthful when they give their answers to a pollster. We try to predict that, and we have a percentage of surety whenever we do polls, but somebody whose life ambition is to study people and how they're going to vote can't get that right either. Obviously, they get it right more than wrong, but just like economists, it's hard to predict what hasn't happened yet. So that is an understanding, a background of what economics is. There's many aspects associated with economics, but I did give that 
very interesting quote about economics. And it's interesting because it shows how difficult, how really unsure the profession could be. I'll leave you with a couple definitions. I want to go back to what Kurt Bill said. He said, the reality is that we're all economists. We all deal with scarcity and we all make choices and calculate how to ration various items that we consume, produce, and utilize. We all consume, produce, and utilize. We all make these decisions. So we're all economists. That leads us to what economics is. It? Economics is the study of how we allocate scarce resources among competing interests. We want to be able to use what we have in the best possible way. What's the simple definition of an economist? It's you and your wallet. If you open up your wallet, uh, or your purse, whatever you may have, or your money clip, there's a certain amount of money in there. Some have more, some have less. But most of us have something. We have something that we want in order to buy or spend. So we use money for that. Money, as we'll learn in other videos or in future studies, money is just the exchange mechanism. It's what we use to buy something. We give somebody money and they give us a product or service. So we all have a certain amount of money. Most of us want to buy more than the money that we have. We want a bigger house, a better car, a newer car. Kids do a better school, go on better travel, stay in better hotels. We usually, except for the very few, the very fortunate few, people who have worked it, and remember, 80% of people who are rich made it on their own, so there's uh, most people who have money have worked hard for it and invested and had a good idea and sacrificed for it and then worked hard. Most people have. But even rich people usually want something more maybe that they can't afford. We're all economists because we have a finite amount of money and we have an infinite, infinite amount of expectations or desires. Few people can buy everything they want. They, too, are economists. So this issue of scarcity, the issue of you have limited resources and unlimited desires, is what economics is about. It's a fascinating subject, right? Your economics is different than mine. What you spend your money on is different than me. Where you get your money is often different than me. So our incomes, which is our money, come from different sources, and our expenses, our outcomes, go to different things. So to predict how people are going to respond to a certain economic factor is challenging. Not impossible, but is challenging. There's a great quote, and I'm summarizing, and it says something like, economics is a great profession for economists to have a job. Again, I'm paraphrasing, but the point is we create this field of economics so people can get a job. Interesting. I've talked a lot about economics because we should have a, definitely a skepticism about economics. But we should not uh, overstate the importance of learning about economics. We should learn about this issue of scarcity. We should learn about how to best allocate our resources. Maybe most importantly, though, what I hope that we get out of this discussion and future one is when we see a statistic, a fact, a table, a chart, a graph, we should have a healthy skepticism on the interpretation or explanation, but we should have some believability in the number itself. Unless somebody is deliberately misstating or lying about the numbers that we're giving, given, most of the numbers are accurate. But when they move to interpretation or understanding, what we hope we get out of this class and others, this discussion and others, is understand the number, but is the explanation right? Let me research the data. Let me research the author. Let me make sure that the explanation that I'm giving is one that we should have some faith in, that we should have some understanding in. And if we do, then of course you can believe what the interpretation is. If we don't, then we're going to be able to say, based on our 
understanding of economics that understand the number explanation is suspect hopefully that's a good start to economics that's our hope is to start our discussion on economics we'll have many more including some of the fundamental statements and definitions of economics it's really a fascinating subject it's a fascinating subject if you understand enough about it to be able to question some of the explanations we can do that we've gone a long way to being an economist ourselves thanks everybody Enjoy the day.